Hey guys, this is called Credit Due. It has two parts. One is God is Love and one is America Falls. This was given on 4 13 24 and then there's a project at the end of this one. So this is going to be a little longer. God is love. God is agape love. God loves people so much that he wants what is best for them. He offers salvation. He offers grace. He teaches what is right and best for humans. He has patience to allow man to come to him. God loved humans so much he offered his own son to make a bridge to him so all could come. When the world begins to be more evil, do not blame God. God does not want even one to perish. But God loves man so much he gave him free will to choose to love him back or to reject him. Those that have rejected God cause evil. Do not blame God. God is love. 1 John 4, 7-9 Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Number two, around 7 a.m., America Falls. I had a dream set in the old Kinney Shoes store in on Tustin Avenue in California where I grew up. Uh, I don't even remember that we ever shopped there. We just drove past it all the time. So the old 70s store, it was never updated. It was small and dated. It was in the dream renamed to be called Cheap America. The whole store was very low end, kind of like Americana garbage, like flags and t-shirts and hats and shoes. It was very touristy, but everything was like really cheap. And it seemed to all be made in like, I don't know, China or something, because it was like super faded or like, like an orange red or everything was just like strange textures. Like no one I know would ever be like, yay, we're going to cheap America. We're going to get a little something to wear. It was just a really odd looking place. And like the printed t-shirts were like really tacky and stuff. Anyway, so they had a huge sign in the store that said going out of business. And there was another one that said whole store, 50% off everything. And then there was another one that said everything must go. When I woke up, I heard these words. The days of America are numbered and it is flickering out soon. Okay, then I have to tell you the next dream is the Chinese capture dream. And this is from 32324. This dream was about the invasion of the United States by China. And I was given later that China approaches from the north and west, Russia approaches from the east, and the Arabians approach from the south. This dream clearly has my husband as being translated and he was a perfected person on a mission as well as I. I was already translated. Now as a point of reference of when this occurs, so this this event of Chinese capture is obviously post the anointed leaving. So after the anointed leave is when this Chinese capture dream is, but this is pre-rapture. Okay, so here's the dream. People were captured by China. Um, the guards were women and they were very mean, but they only came by to check the prisoners on house arrest two times a day. If you were laying in bed and quiet, they left you alone. There was no food. Everyone was under house arrest with no freedoms. But the women in this house were all from different parts of my life. Some were from California, from grade school or high school. Others were from different states that I've lived in. There were more in the house, but four of them stood out strongly in the dream, and I knew them by their first and last name. To keep their privacy, I am only going to replace with what their names mean. So the first was, her name meant a Christian from Benjamin's territory, and this represents and anointed that was not ready at the time of leaving. The next one means God's princess and her last name is an overseer with Jewish genealogy. 
So this represents a Jewish daughter of the king that has the task of an overseer. Then we have pure and source or tool of the rice field. So this is a pure believer and a harvester or one who shares the gospel. And then we have a blade of the sword or fire torch and grand home. So this is one who fights with the Holy Spirit and is heading to heaven, which is the grand home. Okay, so in this dream, all of these people were under house arrest together. Jim was there. He was being carefree and funny. He was the only man in the house. And when I walked in, I was pretending to be a prisoner. I saw him and I said, what are you doing here? And he said, same as you. And so we were both on this mission and our job was to try and get these prisoners out of the house arrest and free. Notice who they are. They're all very strong, faithful Christians. We are coming to rescue them. Okay. So in this dream, we're set in a bunch of condos and it had a centrally located swimming pool. Jim was very bold and he would just get trunks on and go to the pool and sit in the hot tub. Even though there were guards everywhere, he'd just walk right past them unseen. The women who were in the house surely thought he would be shot. The Chinese women guards took everything from the people. They only had the clothes on their backs and a blanket. But when I came in, I noticed that there were beds all over the living area and one couch. The couch was originally in this family room and they had crammed a bunch of beds in there. Now, in this area, I noticed next to the couch between the drapes and between the furniture, um, everything these people owned was crammed into this little space and it was covered with clothing. So very easily accessible, but they were thinking that they were, that everything was gone. Twice a day, the um, women had to lay down and act like they were miserable. But to kill time during the day when no one was watching, they were trying to create and put on a little play or musical for each other's entertainment. At night, there were no lights, so they couldn't really work on their play or musical at night. I was baffled that they were willfully staying prisoners and just trying to fill their day with such wasted activities. And all of their goods were sitting there right behind the couch. No one even bothered to look. I asked why they did not try to leave. They said that they were scared and that the guards were very mean. And some of them said that it was against the rules to leave, pointing out that they were rule followers. I noticed my favorite red vans were there and, and that ticked me off. So I got into the pile where they had taken everyone's goods and I started handing it out to everyone, passing back their possessions to them. I put my red shoes on, which I like to wear when I take a long driver journey. And I said, you could stay here if you want to, but there is no reason to stay here. You are allowed to leave. You can be free. I was planning an exit with Jim. We had studied the guards and we were going to make a nighttime exit after the last check. We helped the women escape under the cover of darkness. Okay, so what is the point? I believe that God has many covert plans um, one is to help his own escape being prisoners, but these did not escape. Why? Why did they not escape? Everyone's being warned. Why are these people that seem to be faithful Christians, some of them with Benjamin genealogy, why are they prisoners? Recall why the women said they were prisoners. First, they were amiable, passive Christians. Um, they were ones who liked to make the best of a bad situation. They were in fear. We were warned excessively in all of these prophecies to not be in fear, but to trust God. But these people weren't trusting God. They were like in fear of the humans. Okay. And they were drawn toward rule following from authority, even if that authority superseded God, or even if that authority was not legitimate. You're going to say, maybe, aren't we supposed to follow the rules from authority? Yes, unless it breaks God's law or unless he says otherwise. Now, this is a foreign invasion, so should we follow the rules of the enemy authority? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. That's one of those things you pray about and you follow God's lead. Because if he says no and you walk right past them, they'll never see you. Because God has that ability. But if you don't listen 
or you disagree with God, then he's going to pull back and be like, well, hope that works out for you. <laughs> okay. So why did we need to rescue these sincere Christians? They were clearly not listening to the Holy Spirit's warning them. We have been promised over and over and over that we will be warned. We will be given peace. We will be led out of harm's way. We will be given miraculous food, water, protections, everything, right? Now, although these are wonderful people, they were not listening to the Holy Spirit. And they ended up under house arrest. How does this relate to the first dream of America going out of business? I asked this because I was like, how does this connect? I asked the Lord. And he said, it is the same thinking that got the United States into the position of being taken down. Not listening to the Holy Spirit, being amiable and passive, trying to accommodate everyone and everything and make the best out of a bad situation. No one will take a stand because they're ruled by fear. And they are drawn to rule following from men over listening to God. Now there's another dream. <laughs> so the second dream was given on 11, 27, 2022, 2.30 in the morning. And this is called Dummy Bomb. I was walking a wooden pier by the water with Seth. We had just left some condos where Sarah lived and it was advertised as being the most secure building in town, which was almost all gray metal with some tiny balconies that have a sliver of a view. Um, Seth had been looking at a condo there to buy that was for a single person, about $10,000. But each time he had previously ordered one and had it built to his specs, it had disintegrated and then he could not buy it. But the day that we went to look together, he met Sarah on the basement floor and he fell in love and he wanted to marry her as soon as he met her. And he decided to upgrade and buy a way nicer unit for two with a wrap around balcony with views. Because even though he hadn't even dated her, he was forward thinking to them being together. Like he knew it in his soul. So I was helping him to look at different larger units that were $35,000, but he wasn't sure how he was going to pay for it. Now, Sarah was on the basement floor in a single unit and it had no view. Her door was just three doors from the steam and power room and some of the large pipes were outside of her door. The walls were all cement in the hallways. Right outside of her door was a white emergency light. Personally, in the dream, I didn't see what was so attractive about this place, but I was trying to be cheerful and not speak negatively about it while I walked with Seth. Seth wanted to walk the pier to see what was outside of the condo building. It was a nice day with blue skies and puffy white clouds, no threat of rain. There were almost no people outside, which was uncharacteristic, but he wanted to see which units would have an ocean view. So we were out as far out on the pier as possible to look back up from the ocean to the condo and I could see these faintly observable clear tubes in the air that had arrows and things and they were moving. There were things moving through the tubes that followed the direction of the arrows. There were three tubes and there were six to 12 oblong objects moving through the tubes. They looked similar, but they were not identical in shape or color. Some were gray, others were blue, and one was red. I said, hey, Seth, look at that. What is that? He's like, what? I said, look at those tubes. I think they're carrying bombs. I think we're about to be bombed. He couldn't see the tubes, and then he said, really? He had that tone of voice that said he didn't really believe me. And then he said, maybe they are. And before he could get the sentence out, at that very second, I looked to the left and I saw several, maybe five boats in submarines. The closest one looked like a bomb, but the middle one, which was red with a big yellow star on it, slid open and it had two launch tubes that came out of it up into the sky. And I said, oh, look, it's China. China is bombing us. But I also felt like Russians could have been involved. 
At that second, I saw a red object streaking through the tube, following the arrows. And because it was closer, I could see it in detail and it looked much like this. It had a red stripe in the middle and a yellow star on it. It exited the tube and exploded and then several other bombs blew up past us. One in the water canal, which is called the A1A, that is between the coast and the land where the majority of the people live and others went on to buildings. Some were like fireworks and they blew up above the buildings and the buildings were taken down from a bomb inside of them. Some were fake. They just landed with a splash in the waterway. No black smoke, no mushroom clouds, but some of their explosions were red and yellow and white. In the dream, I was thinking, what am I here for? This is pre-anointed leaving or am I on a mission? And then I reviewed the prophecy in my head in the dream that said the anointed go before the bombs fall from the sky. I said, we need to get back to my place because in all of my dreams, we are always perfectly safe in my house. I said, it's only eight miles. So we started walking in the dream that all the bombs would be between the actual beach and the eighth mile. Eight miles and past was safe because this is where the multimillionaire's horse properties begin and the coastline with the multimillionaire's beach homes was also safe. Seth was heartbroken because he didn't think the U.S. could be bombed. As we were walking, I said, by the way, what's the date? And he said something with a 19 in it. I don't remember the month, but it was an odd number. And it was like November to January time frame. I said, I knew it. See, it's one of their numbers. That's actually the date I picked. Then he said, shouldn't we go to Sarah's? She's in the safest building in town and it's so close. And I said, oh no, they won't hit us. They're just taking down certain buildings so they can rebuild how they wish and intimidate the people to stay in their homes while they do demolition on essential infrastructure and high value targets. They are not aiming at people yet. We will be fine, but we have to pick up the pace because soon they will put up checkpoints. And he said, why are you so calm? And I said, oh, I've already seen all of this in a dream and heard it in prophecies, but we will have to get to my home soon because we have to go pray and read the Bible. I promise we'll be fine in my home. So here's the interpretation. I felt like one boat for sure was from China, but the other boats were from different countries, like five different countries, which does line up with prophecy. The bomb I saw looked, I looked it up and it most resembled what is called a dummy bomb from World War II used for practice bombing. This makes sense because many of the explosions in the dream were rigged within the buildings or portrayed as fireworks to scare people into staying in their homes. Clearly, they want buildings demolished, but not the toxins of the bombs. Seth, Seth's name means appointed. So in the dream, he represents those that are appointed to give their life to Christ, but have not yet been sealed in sanctification. He was tempted to find security in the world or the safest building in the world, right? That the world provides, but it kept not working for him. And he was appointed to be saved by an anointed to come rescue him. I believe his going home represents the time lapse of the rapture and that he is saved during the war and will go in the rapture. John 6:35. all that the father gives me will come to me and the one who comes to me, I will no, by no means cast out. So Sarah, her name means God's princess, but this Sarah in reality, it actually represents a prodigal who is currently seeking the world as her security. And in the other dreams, she comes back to the Lord while China is occupying her area. Then she becomes one who helps rescue others and take down the Antichrist. Then the wooden pier. There was no sand at this beach. The pier was like a cliff down to the water. And in the bike to the beach dream, I was headed to repair the wooden pier, the foundation that brings people to Christ. The sand represents Christians. So they were all in hiding. That's why there was no sand at the beach. 
and they were praying and safe. Mild, pleasant weather was happening. This means in South Florida, it was probably winter, November to February, which is what the sense was with the date. The most secure building in the world was very unattractive and not homey. It was built for safety, but what the world sees as security, not how God provides security, because we went home to pray and read the Bible. Um, clearly, the war is a planned demolition and planned to control people and to change how the U.S. functions. The coast and everything past eight miles was safe. The number eight in symbology means beyond perfection. Heaven and beyond is not touched. The coast is where the wealthy live, so they are preserving those areas where the money club likes to go, either the beach or out into the country. And they're going to make the rest of the peasants or the servant class or the poor people in their minds um, to be controlled with the things that look scary but that are truly a facade. A giant version of this awful movie called Wag the Dog. It seemed like something like that. Wag the Dog is where a filmmaker creates war for political purposes. So the verses that went with this dream are 1 Thessalonians 5 9, for God did not appoint us to wrath but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. And Psalm 56 11, in God I have put my trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Okay, I was also given these words that go with all of this, which were given to me on 4 7 24, around 11 30 p.m. Um, when I was falling asleep, I had a vision that darkness was gathering and a small window of light was still visible. I was shown this several times. Then these words, around 4 15 a.m. Now, mind you, this was given the day before the eclipse. When people are looking up for the eclipse, a spell is being cast upon them. They push the event because this is a ritual, a death in each city that they highlight. Do not partake in the events, pray against their efforts. And then I was told about this dream that I had that was regarding China and the United States. So you had a dream of the curved horns. This is China. The woman is the U.S. being pursued and entrapped, sold. About 20 years ago, your country agreed to give up your people to China. The dream that I had was a creature with tusks, really long tusks, that would normally go forward. And there was a woman passing by it. Then one tusk made like a U-turn and pursued the woman. She did not know and it pierced her. So this strange tusked animal is China and the woman is the United States. So we were sold out by our leaders and then China comes back to pursue us and kill us basically. Then I got these words, breach. A breach birth is always more difficult. The birth of the church is going to bring the half-borns. It is like a breach birth. They are turned around, and this makes it a more difficult and dangerous birth. It will be more difficult, but they will make it. Pray for the susceptible. They fall for every opportunity. That, along with the leaders, into spells and walk right into the horrors. They lack wisdom because they lack me. 4.30 a.m., which means Elohim, and to bear up or bear with or hold up. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. The king is awaiting your arrival. The angels rejoice. The ancient of days looks forward to your arriving. Soon all will change, never to return. Soon this life that is a labor will be done and your true purpose to begin. The owls that they push is for their goddess. The bulls and the goats, this is their symbolism. It is all repeated. It is their way to announce what they believe. Christians say plainly, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, but they serve the deceiver. So they will never reveal their true beliefs plainly. They put symbols, images, and hints to reveal their beliefs. They place curses on their images and to the susceptible. Each time they see this image, it has a hold on them. 
This does not work on my own. You are equipped with the ability to see the patterns and observe this. Many of my own take note. Like you, they sense it is wrong without knowing why. In their obedience, they just stay clear because this is an odd feeling. But praying and leaning into me can be affected by their curses or spells. Their pagan magic is very weak. It is not able to cross into those who are sealed in me. To those that are susceptible, it is also very weak. The hold is temporary. So they must put images everywhere to hope people repeatedly partake unknowingly. It does have a hold on the susceptible. This is why the great human uprising just before the war will be brief. Not because they stop it with bombs, but they will stop it with bombs because the power will wear off. And the bombs are used just to employ for their plan of control, applied at the right time, knowing their spell is about to wear off. In order to create a mass global uprising, they have been placing spells for years and have had of demons being within people. This is the shift you see and feel in people. They have been oppressed for years in preparation for this very event, so total control can be assured within. All you can do is continue to pray that their chains are broken and hearts are softened. Those who partake in all that they push, like mass sporting events with televised coverage and solar and lunar events, and with the things you observe, they, like the odd uncomfortable pressing toward the attraction of movements of the constellations with in the church, paying attention to all of this, these are all methods they use to their advantage. Those with me are persuaded, and consuming it gives permission into their soul. Christians are under my wing. These are not affected, but also they are persuaded away. And listen, those near my wing may become addicted. There are no addictions that are not caused by demonic oppression. If you see how easy it is for you to give up anything over the years, if I ask you to release it, that is testimony of your nearness to me. Those with strong attractions that cannot let things go, they are all affected by some form of oppression because they want to hold on and they are also chained to it by the demons. Their chains can be broken, but they must be close to me or prayed over by those who are close to me. People walk around in a spiritual battle they do not know. The Bible is simply clear about this. The spiritual fight is a daily fight, but you take this seriously. It is a source of defeat. It is rooted in not worshiping from the heart because worship fuels and uses a connection that is deep and that connection fuels the desire to know more and more and it brings a closeness and an understanding of my majesty. My majesty brings faith that I am who scripture says I am. Misunderstanding brings boldness and security. This is the precursor of true faith. And letting me carry one's trouble in full faith, this is the same as being under my wing. Being under my wing is how to stay clear of the pagan influences of your world's culture. Nearness to me repels demons, the pagan spells, and any influence from repeated imagery. I draw mine away from these things with discomfort. Those who do not follow this lead are just like those that go to war without being suited up. It lacks wisdom and is dangerous. Okay, so that's what I have to share and I hope you have a great day.